All right, in today's video, we are going to be reviewing the newly released iPhone 15 Pro. And I recently took it out on a portrait shoot in a natural well-lit studio, side by side, my professional photography camera, the full frame 33 megapixel Sony a7 IV. I shot on similar focal lens and apertures, so I'll be rolling some photo and video examples as we review the iPhone 15 Pro and how well it competes against my Sony a7 IV. So let's just jump right into it. Yeah, I love that. Hold that. Ah, cool. Yeah. The most interesting feature for myself and probably the most controversial is the Apple log. ProRes log and those beautiful colors are only available for the 15 Pro and the 15 Max. And we're going to be talking about this later in the video as it's definitely a more advanced feature and I just don't know how many people are going to actually utilize it even though it impressed me the most and it just looks fantastic. You might be aware that the new iPhone 15's main camera is 48 megapixels and that's for all models and that's a big jump from the 12 and 24 megapixel generations. But it's only the iPhone 15 Pro and the Max models that you'll really see that 48 megapixels shine as they have the ability to shoot raw photos. With iPhone's raw files, you can change things in Adobe Lightroom like your white balance. Because the actual camera sensor is a lot smaller than my full frame Sony a7 IV, Apple have always been clever to get around this with computational photography by using smart HDR5, which is Apple's secret source. And to be completely honest, I've never been a fan of HDR photos. This is because of the fake looking sky that you get, the unrealistic shadow detail, the over sharpened, over saturated, and just way too much contrast in a normal image. But Apple's definitely shifting away from this and becoming a lot less aggressive with their HDR making the brightest and the darkest part of the image looking way more natural. And with the RAW files, you can actually decide how much you want the camera to do in post with a slider in Lightroom called Pro RAW. And I found this a very intuitive experience as I could raise the exposure without raising the overall exposure and also have the creative decision for the phone to do less or more work. The first location was a harshly lit scene and the iPhone did a fantastic job. It kept the skin tones very even in this high dynamic range scene. With putting the raw files side by side with the exact same white balance and similar composition, can you guys pick which one was shot on the iPhone? And after editing the photos with my preset, does your opinion change? Leave a comment down below if you think the iPhone is on the left or on the right of the screen. I'll leave these two raw files in a link in the description down below for you guys to have a closer look. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you which one is which. It's not until you zoom right into the image that you can clearly see the difference between my full frame camera being a lower resolution and the iPhone's main 48 megapixel camera. You see how much more detail there is the Sony a7 IV is a more natural, sharp looking image. The results definitely do deteriorate when you switch between the lens on the iPhone. You can see clearly the main camera next to the secondary cameras, there is a massive drop in quality. I severely underestimated how much light the iPhone actually needs. While shooting, I didn't even think this was an issue because I barely had to raise the ISO on my Sony a7 IV. And when I was editing these photos with my presets, I noticed that the iPhone really does not like raising the ISO and will make the shutter speed super low, giving you a very soft image. In portrait photography, we have something called bokeh or the background becoming out of focus. The larger the sensor or the aperture, the more background blur you will get. You're probably already aware that the iPhone has portrait mode to compensate for their small sensor. And I think the portrait mode does a fantastic job. Most non-professional photographers wouldn't even be able to tell the differences between these two images with one being shot in portrait mode on the iPhone and one on the Sony a7 IV. It's only really when you zoom in, you notice that the edges around the face, like the hair and also around the ears can get a little bit mixed up and confused. You can actually change how much background blur you want with the portrait mode 
while you're taking the photo and also after you're taking the photo with the aperture compensation. You can't actually shoot raw in portrait mode unfortunately and I found that the HEF files have an edited look to them and they also don't really edit that well. But you can actually shoot in raw, edit your photos in Lightroom and then use a software called Luminar to add a focus map and give you that background blur. If this is a workflow that you would be interested in, check the link in the description down below. I do actually use Luminar to retouch my photos. So all the photos in today's video are retouched with Luminar and I do it in a couple minutes with a preset that I've made and I've made that available for free for you guys. And all the photos in today's video are edited with my newly released V2 preset pack that is available for Lightroom and also works for Lightroom Mobile. So you guys can edit your photos on the go. So if you're interested in any of this, it is linked in the description down below. I went onto Apple's website and I counted they are advertising seven different lenses, but if you flip the iPhone over, you can clearly see there's only three lenses. And this is really good marketing, but it's also super confusing for a lot of people. The iPhone is basically just selecting what camera to use and then crop into that image to get a different field of view. And they're probably adding like a bit more sharpening to the image to try to improve the quality. I took a photo at all the different focal lengths on the iPhone in RAW and the iPhone in portrait mode and on my Sony a7 IV with very similar compositions to compare the compression, the background blur and the overall image quality. Now we're gonna jump into the feature that really excited me the most and I was definitely pretty skeptical about it until I tested it out and that is the Apple Log. The 4K files are sharp and they just render really nice. The standard iPhone footage just looks complete garbage when you look at it compared to the log profile. And that's because on log profiles, you have the full creative control of adjusting your saturation and contrast in post. If you edit on Final Cut like I do, you have access to the Apple Log LUT, which is inbuilt into Final Cut, and that looks great. But I was actually really surprised in how well my own S-Log free LUTs look on top of this iPhone footage. I prefer this workflow because I can change my exposure and do a lot more white balance adjustments before the transfer LUT. So you definitely don't have to go out and buy my S-Log free LUTs. There is free LUTs out there that Apple have produced, but if you want a bit more creative control, they are linked in the description down below. Now, the reason why most people will not even want to use this is because you have to shoot in ProRes and the files are massive. You will actually need to plug in a fast SSD via a USB-C cable if you wanna shoot in 4K 60 frames per second. Before I tell you which one of these two photos is the iPhone, I wanna quickly mention a few things that I didn't have time to say in this video. I think the USB-C cable is a massive welcome change. Just the whole purpose of having one cable and being able to transfer files a lot faster. The iPhone's raw photo files were massive. I think some of them got right up to like 68 megabytes so if you're looking to shoot on raw on the iphone definitely have an ssd handy to just quickly offload that footage because if you're like me i'm always running out of space on my iphone obviously the sony a7 IV is a much better photography camera but I do think in well-lit and simple scenes that don't require complex things like having a lot of depth in the scene and just a clean backdrop, I think an iPhone does a fantastic job. And personally, I wouldn't use this in a professional setting. Even when I'm just going out to take daily photos, I don't use my iPhone. I usually use a smaller camera setup. Okay, let's get into which one of these two images is the iPhone. And when we crop into the image, can you guys tell the differences? The iPhone image is actually on the right. And I wonder how many people actually got this right because when I was editing these photos and I wasn't looking at the file names, I was getting confused which one is the iPhone and which one is the Sony camera. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like the way that I edited my photos, I do sell Lightroom presets. They are linked in the description down below. If you wanna grade this Apple footage with my S-Log free lights, I think they work a fantastic job at 100%, so I'll link them in the description down below. Also, check out my online store and all the gear that I use to make this video, and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.